ஆஸ்கிராஸ்கிராஸ்கிராஸ்கிராஸ்கிராஸ்கிராஸ்கிராஸ்கிராஸ்கிராஸ்கிராஸ்கிராஸ்கிராஸ்கிராஸ்கி
things how they could look or should look in the future, reverse engineer that and put a group of experts together in, in, in one team and move them into the same direction. So I built since I was uh, 19, so the last eight years of my life, did nothing else but build companies and always had the privilege of learning from people who are way further than, than, than I was. Um, and I think that's the reason why I accelerated relatively fast. Um, I never went to uni. I never had the theory part. I studied entrepreneurship in a practical, <laughs> practical way, essentially. And actually, there's, a, there's a, quite a history to, to Askira. We started Askira one and a half years ago, but it has a history that goes back five years that if, I, if you want, I can touch base on, on this in a, in a minute. But that is more how I got to, got to the project. It was more by accident and going with the flow, following my intuition and uh, doing what I enjoy. I, I never did really anything that I, I don't enjoy. And it was not because of the money or because of the fame or the status. I just didn't know anything else, to be honest. I just followed uh, a, a path and that that led me here and I, I, re I love what I'm doing and I think you have to be passionate and you have to love what you're doing otherwise it's not not possible to to do that you know right I, I did not intend to ask you or probe you more on this because primarily the meat of the conversation today is about Askira but you know I yeah. cannot let go without you uh, letting us know about the power of your uh, having a mentor could you yeah. shed some more light? Or maybe could you could you name your mentor, or you want to keep it private? It is up to you. No. But uh, let us know uh, how do you find mentors, and uh, how important are they, and how could how could one um, take help of a mentor to accelerate their careers or businesses? Um, that's a good question, and I think we could have a whole podcast just about that topic. <laughs> so let me briefly touch base on this because. Um, now I'm at the stage where I also have people that I can that I mentor and guide, and it it it, it does not really happen on on purpose. I would say, it's more a certain. It happens more by 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 accident, and, and a mentor needs a mentee as much the as the mentee needs a mentor. Because what is all of that worth if you don't give your knowledge and experience and 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 share it with with others and help them develop? So for me. Uh, mentor meeting a mentor always happens when you're on the move I, I i i believe in law of attraction and when you want something and you move towards a certain direction uh, life and the universe or whatever you believe in if it's god if it's allah like uh, will will help you and, and and support you and bring the right people into your life mm. um so I don't, I, I don't believe that there's a science of how to get a mentor behind it. It's more like you want something, move in, in a certain direction and the right people will, will follow. So if you want to learn how to build online businesses, mm. try to put yourself into the environment where people are who are doing this. If you want mm. to learn about prop tech, do exactly what you are doing, you know. Go into uh, prop tech uh, networks, prop tech conferences, approach people who are in prop tech, get in touch with them, and automatically you will build your, your network uh, uh, around that. And then it, it has a lot to do with the personal connection. You, know? you cannot be so close because the, the relationship between a mentor and a mentee is like a relationship between <laughs> probably your your wife or your husband and 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 yourself it's it's very intimate it's very close um and i believe that certain mentors are good for certain areas so some have a fitness coach to to become more fit some have a like a nutrition coach some have a business coach somehow so i would say be on the move know what you want uh move into a certain direction and like be alert and, and be open-minded and because it takes a lot of ego that you have to take out of yourself and out of the conversation in order to accept help and, 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 and mentorship and, and guidance, you know, but as I said, I could talk about this for, for like yeah. a, a no, long just, time. Yeah. Okay. I, I would not spend a lot of time. Uh, just, just a very practical step. Like you are struggling and you mm -hmm. said that you 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 find your mentor uh, given that you are in the right environment how do you how do you uh, 
how do you ask for mentorship like is this a natural attraction like you are dating somebody <laughs> where two people just meet or you go and actively seek that you see that this this guy i think could be a great mentor to me and go and approach them and how what how likely it is if say you, you were you were 18 you said okay when especially when you were 18 you have nothing to give them back right so yeah. how does that collaboration work can can i just randomly go and and ask somebody to be my mentor without offering something back to them there are the different approaches so the the way i did it was um, his name is by the way navit habib he's my co-founder in in my uh, current company which is askira obviously um i told him look you're an extremely busy person i know that but if you would have 15 minutes of of your life for a phone call i would really much appreciate that i would love to learn from you and ask you some questions if that is possible that would be much appreciated and he happened to say yes uh, you can only you can only get a yes when you ask you know you, you and no you have a yes you you need to ask for and from one conversation came a second one a, a third one a, a fourth one and as i said um it, it's fun to teach something it's fun to to transfer your knowledge and and wisdom and experience with another person i just happened to be i don't know why i can explain it in a, in a very blessed position that i've hit the jackpot and i i cannot thank him enough he is like one of the major reasons why i am who i am and what i'm doing today and he has had a tremendous impact on on my life um so how do you get a mentor without having giving them anything there's a there's a 33% rule which is you should spend 33% with people who are one step behind you mm. and bring them to the next level bring the, like spend 33% of your time uh, with people who are on the same level as you who are your 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 the mates uh, you, you're you're going yes. hunting with you're 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 building companies with you're not essentially in the same company but you're you're on the go together these are your thunder buddies you know yes. yeah. and spend 33% of your time with people who are further than you and mm. learn from them nice like in this example obviously 1% is missing you can choose wherever you want to spend this <laughs> one <laughs> but but nice. you know it's give something back have people that are alongside with you and learn something mm. um and so there's no really no 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 practical advice that will lead to guaranteed success it's more about be open be humble ask have a question and be willing to learn um and and accept and yes. then i think it will happen uh sooner or later automatically if you, if you if you want it and if you are on the move like it will happen for sure excellent i think this this is a words of wisdom you is you, you sound so wise for your age tom i think uh, this is what uh, entrepreneurship makes you right it just accelerates your personal growth uh, you you uh you just grow uh, exponentially when you are on an entrepreneurial journey so it, it just is very evident with the way you speak so so thanks for sharing that um yeah so let's let's get started uh, what, what is this <laughs> what is this <laughs> now let's get started 15 minutes in already now let's get started um look to to give you some background information in 2017 2018 we had a platform that was supporting early stage uh, startups in the blockchain world and because there were it was in the ICO hype and there were a lot of scams a lot of fake companies uh, with bad teams bad intentions bad business models and we uh, screened them did our due diligence we had a really good team with with former bank owners from the Netherlands price waterhouse coopers like really high level high caliber people were working on this project and the business model was to to screen the best and most promising projects and list them on the platform give them exposure to to a community and for the community have a filter on what is a good project and what is the reason behind that and for the projects obviously to have access to community to funding to marketing and branding <laughs> and one of the projects we were in in touch with uh, was hardrock hotel 
and they were looking for alternative ways to fund uh, like eight hotels in Brazil. So we developed a whole project plan, um, contracts, etc. Like spend a lot of work, but the project unfortunately never really launched. So there are multiple reasons behind that. I have I, I cannot ex like expose them. How do you say? No, not not expose. Disclose. <laughs> Expose would be something else. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but we we saw that this was actually one of the most promising projects that we have ever seen, and we we screened in this time approximately two thousand projects, um, and this was by far the most promising one because you you use technology uh, to bring a benefit in a real world asset. Um, obviously there are different options right now for people to enter the, the real estate market with different REITs, um, different fund structures, uh, etc. cetera. But from, from, a, from an overall market perspective, real estate is still not very accessible from our perspective. And blockchain technology is still very volatile. Um, there are a lot of projects that, are based on hype, based on community size, where a real world asset, the real value behind that is, is missing. So what Askira does essentially is to make an easier entrance into real estate, and in our case, hospitality real estate, where people can earn from hotels on the one side uh, for the community and for the hotels to have access to funding communities, marketing, branding, the overall community part, um, plus obviously the financial aspect. And for what we bring to the blockchain industry is a more stable, a more, um, I don't know if I can say that, but a more, we, we, we have in mind to have a more secure entrance into blockchain for people who are not very, uh, well educated and, and knowledgeable in these markets but when they see hey there's a project that uses technology but the focus is on a real asset um, then for them it's more digestible more understandable because most of the people have fractional ownership with their partner mm. you actually like a lot of people have fractional ownership because 50 percent of the house is owned by the husband or the wife, you know? So it's not, it's not uh, like owned by, by communities, um, but essentially the real estate is something very tangible and is generating cash flow. So what, is, what Askira does is we split hotels using technology into smaller parts so people can go onto the platform, go through a KYC, choose the hotel that they like, um, obviously, there's a whole list of uh, information about the hotel, why this is a good recommendation, why, what is the risk, etc. whole feasibility study in there. And then the people can choose their own budget, um, like 1,000 euros, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, whatever suits their budget. And based on, on, on this part, based on their participation, they can have a profit share from the ver revenues that are being generated uh, from, from the hotel. So instead of going to a bank and getting a loan and doing a bunch of paperwork and having credit scores, et cetera, borrowing 200,000 euros and then buying one property in London, for example, and having your money stuck for the next 10, 15, 20 years, you bring much more liquidity and accessibility uh, to the everyday person. Um, and I'm, look, I, I could talk about this and I'm, I know we are gonna talk about this for another 40 minutes most probably, but I think this is a very good overview, good, good start and, and happy to chat more about the details and, and whatever you would like to know. Sure, excellent. Yeah, that was a very good summary and uh, very, very disruptive and very exciting as well. So while while we understand fractional ownership has been there in the industry for a, for a while, uh, could you differentiate for the audience to understand how this is different from a regular fractional ownership? Maybe if we can take pieces 
then people will be able to understand because this is again you you were very categorical in saying that this is not ownership of the asset mm-hmm. uh hence you cannot call it a fractional ownership model mm-hmm. uh could you could you explain how you are different from a regular fractional ownership of assets yeah so obviously we've we've done a pretty large market analysis and i la- first of all uh, i like the direction where the market is going obviously prop tech is a bit difficult right now but we are moving from um in 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 bear markets we are moving uh to more sustainable more long term projects which i which i like and I, i think the fractional ownership part in different areas um it's not only in in property but also in in art in precious metals in uh, diamonds um in solar plants is is great i think is a is a is a great um direction that we are heading um in regards to real estate we've seen other companies offering that um locally which means in their in their local markets which is good uh we've seen it in um residential and so single and, and multi family homes which is also super exciting super fun fun market um and we've seen it with bigger tickets so with accredited investors and like starting with 150 200,000 uh, euro minimum uh, ticket size for example the sls hotel in in dubai uh, offered uh, fractional ownership um with an additional time share uh, but the minimum ticket was 160,000 i think that the the market shows different aspects that are super fun super exciting and i'm 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 really looking forward to see the development in the next few months um and when we we started with with the market research we looked into different markets we looked into shipping we looked into diamonds we looked into precious metals um and how blockchain could could solve a lot of a lot of the traditional issues with the um security and the the guarantee of ownership in a way the thing is in in our case um you need some form of centralization so we first of all we are not looking to buy a hotel 100% mm. we partner up with existing hotels that are already up and running and we're looking to buy 10 15 20% mm. when a hotel is 50 million we want to buy 10% we take the 5 million we list it onto the platform the individual people can choose their own budget and we as a company we crowd fund the amount of 5 million and then we as a company we buy and we own the 5 million part in the property in the hotel the reason for that is you need to still do the diligence you need to do the contracts you need to pay the lawyers you need to do the accounting so you need some sort of centralization if you would have like 100 or 1000 or 10000 or even 100000 owners every time there's a trade in ownership all the people <laughs> would need to sign it off <laughs> and every single person would need to pay for that so when i'm buying real estate in the netherlands or in germany or austria or switzerland i would need to pay at least 10000 euros for contracts lawyers accountants so all the official paperwork costs me 10000 euros It, our whole model would not work if that would be the case so it's a bit of a trade off for the community they don't legally own the part in the hotel but we have through technology a profit sharing agreement with them so on our platform we have ways with the use of blockchain technology to connect their participation with a certain project and by the amount we know exactly how much profit share they're getting and in order to have it transparent um and available for communities for third parties for everybody involved um obviously first of all all the transactions are um publicly available on chain that's number one second of all we are working together with Uh, third parties auditors that are in the market for decades that are trusted parties yeah. that uh, do valuation reports that do the accounting that do the compliance like all the the official part 
they do it for us in 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 the name of the community um so yes it's a trade-off yes the people are not legal owners but in return we try to put more transparency and more security layers so the people still see that it's a very trustworthy and reliable opportunity that they can get uh, get access to got it my my question to you is if somebody is not from the hospitality sector and they they bump into this opportunity uh do you also uh, share the performance reports or the pnl of the hotel to show trust on how the hotel is performing because uh, if you are doing profit share are you guaranteeing profits or it is like equity that means in a season in a quarter if the hotel is not performing well they would not get the money is that is that how it is uh, so we we never guarantee profits um yes. that that would not work also from a from a regulator standpoint right. you you cannot guarantee anything it is essentially like equity it's it's really it's a profit sharing agreement so the hotel now we have acquired a 10% in the in the 50 million euro project the hotel generates revenue and pays a profit share to the company depending on the deal they do this either monthly or quarterly so they pay the profits 100% of the profits to us as a company okay. we take a cut from that and distribute obviously the majority to the individual uh, backers of the platform so the, to the individual members um the reason why it's good for actually the community that we take a cut in that is otherwise we would only list hotels and we would not care about the performance mm. so we essentially position ourselves as really partners from the community on the one side and partners from the hotels on the other side the hotels are the experts in their local markets they are the experts in the maldives and mexico and indonesia wherever they are the experts and we want to come as a minority shareholder we bring funding we bring uh, marketing and branding and we bring the community in return we get a profit share from the revenues and we as a company also obviously profit from that but it's good that we do this because otherwise we would just our intention would be to list as many projects as possible and then we say see you later guys uh, good luck with the <laughs> with the hotel you know are you also responsible um, for 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 the hotel to perform well or is it is it just with the hotel to ensure that they, they are efficiently running their operations not in the not in the first instance uh, we are looking to either build or acquire our own management company or our own operator in the future Mm. but uh, that is down the road the reason why we want to buy into existing uh, hotels mm. is because they have their management already they have the operator already they have the contractors already and what we do is we do proper due diligence on them and the reason why why we see also so much interest from the hospitality side is because obviously during covid the industry got a huge hit Mm. So for them now it's more difficult to have access to financing. Got it. Um that is number 1. Mm. Number 2 is we bring them immediate liquidity. So we can speed up the the whole process so much more uh than what it would look like if you if you if they would be working either with a bank with a family office um with like big institutional mm. sorry with big institutional investors. Plus they keep the majority we we really want to be the minority we want to be the partner we would much rather buy 10% in 10 different projects and diversify the risk than owning 100% in one project i think that's a, that's a beautiful it's a win win for everybody right because otherwise if you were to acquire the entire property uh first of all they would not want to sell it but here you are giving them some fundraising opportunity okay and still re retain the majority so it's a win win it's a beautiful model if they uh, if they if they sell if they sell 10% to us plus we bring them through our community like and through our marketing with with uh, influencers photographers videographers brand ambassadors much more exposure and therefore additional revenues right. it it really is a, a win win for 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 all parties involved from our perspective 
got but uh, so with your business model are you making a cut from the uh, hotel and also from your backers or only your cut is from both sides or your cut is only from the hotel we we make a cut on the funding so when we acquiring um for example the 10% for 5 million we take 5% uh, commission for this so if we uh, bring 5 million in funding we get from the hotel 5% commission for this and then we take uh, a certain percentage from the profits that are being generated uh, from the hotel so both so 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 both ways both ways excellent yeah that, that's fair um, my question to you is on the liquidity you said that it is liquid for the backers how can the how can the backers uh, sell off their their equity or uh, i do not know what the term is 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 it is it tokens is it uh, is it share <laughs> what's it is, what it is it is tokens and i understand where you're coming from so the way we the way we've uh, structured it is that you have an 18 months uh, locking period and after 18 months um, so when there's a the, there's a project let's say let's stick with the example of the 5 million we split it into 5 million tokens Mm. and uh, nfts so what the people are buying is for example for 1000 euros they buy 1000 tokens mm. and they get an nft that is connecting their tokens with the specific property so you can think of it it, it sounds more complex than it actually is it's you can think of it like monopoly mm. in monopoly you need to purchase the street first Mm. And depending on how many houses you have on your street, mm. the more rental income you get when somebody comes and goes around and, 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 and uh, stops on your, on your street. Okay. With us, you have an NFT that is, for example, connected to a property in Indonesia. Mm. And the more tokens you have connected to this NFT, the more profit share you get from this specific um, project. And after this 18 month, you can choose... If you want to keep it 100%, if you want to sell 20% on a public market, um, or if you want to sell 100%. So you have an 18 months locking period. Mm -hmm. And after 18 months, you can, as I said, for example, let's say you, you want to sell 50%, so 500 tokens. You're mm -hmm. selling now. Mm -hmm. Then the other people who are part of this uh, specific launch, mm -hmm. they get a notification on the app, hey, 500 tokens have been sold. Do you want to add more tokens to your NFT? Mm. So then the people can buy more tokens on a public exchange and lock these tokens inside their NFT. Mm. So the dividends that you previously got is now getting person B that is, for example, somebody from, from Spain. So, so, so when you're talking about public exchange, it is Azkira's exchange, am I right? No, it's that is that is the secret sauce that essentially we we've we've created. We wanted to have a solution where you can earn a, a, a profit share from assets, uh, but have the opportunity to publicly trade a token. This I think this would go too much into detail okay. for now, but you you can not only. Uh, you can not only trade the token platform internal, but uh, on on public exchanges. Okay, I, I, since since you asked me to stop, I will not. I, I was just curious because there are public stock markets where you where you actually exchange, but I, it seems like you have a uh, you have an exchange which is beyond Askira. So which is which is which is what is ma makes it attractive, isn't it? Yeah. But thanks for for for, for sharing that. Um, excellent. It is. It is a bit like. Uh, it's a bit like you know when you when you would own the the tokens. Essentially, they are not really shares of a company, they, but they represent a virtual value of the overall company. So we have a uh, hundred uh, billion tokens. No, a hundred million tokens. Sorry, a hundred million tokens. So a hundred million tokens represent the overall value so when we acquire uh, for example 10 million worth of hotels in in the first year then the 100 uh, million tokens are essentially backed 
buy 10 million worth of real estate that is publicly like available you you, you see on on paper and on on record that the company owns these assets mm. so the more assets we are acquiring we are not generating more tokens mm. obviously so we go from 10 million to 20 million to 50 million to 100 million because we we buy more hotels. Right. So the so that each token can be seen like a virtual share mm-hmm. of uh, um, of a of a company. It's it has mechanisms like a traditional stock. Okay. Amazon yes. has a certain stock price right. that is backed by the business model, the revenues the company structure, additional revenue streams, etc. It is really like the token is like a, like the stock of, of the company. Mm. But there's a double twist in there. When you use the token within a specific property, it also generates you revenue from a specific, from, from a specific hotel. So it's as if you would hold an Amazon stock okay. and it's generating you revenue from every user that has amazon prime for example because yeah. that's the part of the business where you bought yourself into ah nice okay got it so but uh, how do you decide how many tokens to create for a 10 percent uh, share in a in a or 10 percent equity of a, a hotel is it is it random or it is based on no no, no. that is that is ba- that is based on mathematics <laughs> we we were we were working on tokenomics for a total of 18 months and this has been an extremely complex process um, but we found a way and this is also by the way um, will be publicly available i have the tokenomics here the white paper is being written um, is currently being written and probably published in the next few weeks also um, so then people can see our, our tokenomics, but essentially it's this very clear stated how many tokens are being used for which property, which property size, et cetera. It's, it's all um, available and not changeable. That is the important thing with, with tokenomics. Otherwise you would lose trust from the community. You would lose trust from your um like institutional investors, you would lose trust from your. So we set up a framework that is working for us for the next, I don't know how many years, but we can we can acquire multiple billions worth of hotels um, before we have any issue. So at around, let me check. Let me check. Not that I give you wrong information. Uh, we can I, acquire. I think what what's exciting about your model is you yeah. can acquire fractions of a property, which some other other players are trying to acquire the full properties and that's where they are slowing down because, hey, not all properties are up for sale, right? So it's a very, very good model for win, win, win. Um, Thank you. you. So I, I, I wanted to also ask you about the consumer awareness because this is something you are at the cutting edge. So you are excited about it. I am excited about it. But the general public, the, the mass market, okay, uh, they they are still to catch on to this wave. So there is a lot of lack of awareness and education. So how are you doing that for consumer awareness as part of this program? That's a very good question. I'm very well prepared. Because um, I think that is a crucial topic that is completely underestimated. Mm-hmm. Because you are building your product not for yourself, but for the other people. Exactly. <laughs> and a lot of companies fall short on this. They're building what they understand. They are mm. building what, what they would like the most. Okay. But they struggle to put it into perspective and put it into an understandable framework. In our case, for the consumer, it's fairly simple. You use the platform and you earn from hotels. Mm. That's it. That is the baseline. (laughs) Um, If somebody cares about, as you, like, how's that working? How's it regulatory? Who's owning it? What is the (laughs) structure behind it? How's the technology working? We're happy to to go into detail. 
but we are not pressuring the complexity into people's face. Yeah. And I think one part of it is we have an extremely talented team of product developers and designers that really understand consumer behavior and really break it down to what is what is understandable because with with the urge and the 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 mission to push um technology and disruption forward sometimes you are missing the bridge to the so-called old economy and and you, you're not pick what you need to do is grab somebody by the hand and walk with him uh, in order not to not to lose them so on the product side to be honest i would love to have the fancy stuff and shiny and flashy and nft and graphics and whew. the thing is if the people don't understand it you didn't win anything <laughs> you know so you will see in the app uh, once we are launching for the general public a lot of elements from existing companies which makes the whole user experience fairly easy. So we spent a lot of time in consumer behavior in the platform and built the product in a way that is natural for them. So it's normal for us to have a menu bar on the bottom where you click, okay, personal area, portfolio, financials. Uh, okay, if, if there is like a one slash 19, that means, okay, if I click on it, I probably have 19 pictures. But you, you want to build a product that is easy to understand and easy to transition for people. Mm. Um, so I think the educational part happens on the fly while holding people's hand and, and by having like a critical mass on board. If you try to disrupt and innovate too fast, you're going <laughs> to lose, which sounds weird, but I think you have to find the right... Um, the right middle way between these two worlds. I, I, I'm loving this conversation with you, Tom, because you, you, you are a real product guy who understands how, how disruption, not all disruption is good because you will suffer with mass adoption if it is too new. Uh, so when you said that you have to hold uh, hands off from the old economy to the new economy and many, many businesses, many disruptions have failed because of this. I, I clearly remember when Google Google Glass came in, uh, it was way too advanced for for a common man to wear it because they would look 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 like a fool. Uh, instead, you need to integrate your new technology into that existing world so that the the gap is not too, too much, right? So uh, I, I really admire your product thinking and your and your wisdom in 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 it's... mass market adoption. It's 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 not my way of thinking to be honest. Like it's I have really I have an amazing team around me. Like all all all, all credits go to my team. I have I have the best co-founder. I have an amazing COO. I have an amazing business development team. Uh, I have an amazing tech team around me. So it's 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 fun, you know, to work with with people that are much smarter than you, and. Yes. Um, to to surround yourself with experts in in that field, and and now I add another checkbox uh, is, that is humility. Okay, <laughs> Tom Tom has amazing humility. Excellent. Um, my my question to so you mentioned about uh, not just financials from the hotel industry, but also community branding, marketing. Could you could you uh, could you explain what other benefits are the hotels uh, getting from this other than just raising money? Yeah. Look, if, uh, if you buy Bitcoin now, mm. you, what emotional attachment do you have? Nothing. Very limited. Maybe you yes. have it when you go to a Bitcoin conference. Mm. Yeah. When, you, when you buy into a hotel on the Eskira platform, you might want to fly to the hotel. Mm. You might want to have... Uh, like dinner in the restaurant mm. and you pay a hundred euros but 0.1 cent goes back into your own pocket because mm. you're part of this when you go to the hotel 
we have the vision of having other people there that have a similar idea, a similar mind. Because obviously, in terms of marketing, um, you need to start somewhere. And we did, we spent a good amount of money on, on marketing budget to see what where the community is coming from, what the interest is. And our target group is really the people we, we, we are building this product for is 25 to 34. We have still also a lot, lot of people that are a bit older, some that are a bit younger than this, but our core group is between 25 and 34. People who are financially in the situation where they understand that uh, taking responsibility for their own financial future is important. Mm-hmm. But still, they want to be. They want to have experience. They want to experience a bit more freedom, mm-hmm. um, and don't want to tie themselves in terms of real estate investments to a singular location. Mm-hmm. Um, so most probably, when you're at the hotel, mm-hmm. you also meet people who are a bit like-minded than you. Um, mm-hmm. One brand that does it amazing, and we have no connection with them whatsoever, mm-hmm. is uh, Selena. Selena, at the end of your stay, is not asking how's the room, was it was it fresh, was it clean, mm-hmm. but they ask you how many connections did you make. Mm, Selena, Which, Selena is 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 the brand that that builds for digital nomads, right? Yes, exactly. So they, it's beautiful, you know, because it brings a whole new element. If you if you're looking only from it from a financial perspective for the customers go and buy gold and put that under your pillow and you'll be safe. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not just for the financial aspect that people join Askira. Mm-hmm. It's more, it, it's, it's, it's the community. It's the new approach. It's the, the new world. It's the, it's the lifestyle. I see us in the future much more as a lifestyle brand than mm-hmm. at the core of financial vehicle, you know, right. and, I think around hospitality, you can build so many beautiful things. You can, you can organize events. You can organize um, meetings with the community. Um, you can build your own management. There are so many beautiful things that you can build around hospitality uh, that the, the, the potential is limitless. I'm, I'm joking around with my business partner sometimes because I, I told him I, I want to do Askira Airlines. <laughs> one day <laughs> but uh, that is that is so far down the road we, we have we have a lot of work to do in the meanwhile but um this is for the, the benefit for the, the benefit for the hotels is a lot of younger brands that are in the market for 8 10 15 years they don't have a loyalty program like hilton honors or uh, or marriott and Loyalty program, such as uh, through American Express with the points, are becoming more and more popular. Mm. And by having access from the hotels to uh, a group of people, we are now currently, we did a pre-launch in December. We, we have people from 18 countries only in Europe. We, we will also launch only in Europe and then uh, expand um, more globally but imagine you have you're the owner of a hotel and you partner up with a brand you keep the majority in your uh, in your assets but you get some funding and you get access to a group of tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people that want to come to your uh, to your hotel they want to stay there they want to meet like-minded people so therefore also the the choice of brands that we are partnering with is very mm-hmm. important we are not looking for uh 1000 key hotels in the city center of paris or so we look for boutique hotels 80 mm-hmm. to 150 rooms mm-hmm. in tulum uh, mexico in uh, uluwatu bali indonesia mm-hmm. you know like really amazing um amazing resorts, amazing boutique uh, hotels. Mm. And so the benefit for them is they have access to, to, to a large community and potentially if they want to develop projects in the future and our community likes what they're doing, probably they got a, a good amount of supporters 
for the future projects. Um, plus, additionally, we are building a network of content creators, videographers, photographers, influencers, brand ambassadors. Look, 40% of all travels are being booked through Instagram. That's correct, yeah. A hotel, if they don't have a proper social media, they mm. are out of the market rather sooner than later. Mm. So we give them access to a community and put them on the map if they are not already on the map um, with with their social and uh, with the, the social media presence. Mm. So because most of the real estate companies, hospitality brands, they know hospitality. Mm. They know they know how to manage assets. Mm. They don't know community. They don't know people. You know they don't they don't. Some of them are really good in culture, but not all of them. So when we bring them access to funding, culture, community, people, I think the value that they are getting besides the financial aspect is so much more valuable for them in the long term mm -hmm. than, than just the money, to be honest. Uh, this, is, this is fascinating. And I can, I can imagine just by giving a small stake, they are getting a fan base of loyal supporters, which... Which is which is such a such a big value add, uh, the, the 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 cash or the the revenues the the funds is 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 a very small aspect of it. The bigger aspect is you are building a fan base, you are building a community, and then uh, you are spreading that. They become your champions of the hotel, so they are going to story tell about your hotel to their network. So yeah. it's a, such a massive gain for these hotel industries. Excellent. And this, I think, can be replicated to just about any industry, not just hotels, isn't it? Uh, you mean in real estate or any other industry? Not real estate. It could be, uh, it could be a band <laughs> that wants to uh, sell a stake of their own. It could, like, just like NFT, no? It's, uh, I mean, you, you can... Yeah, you can, yeah. yeah the, look, like, uh, NFTs specifically are majority is a community building tool look mm. what yuga labs did with board ape mm. the thing is then there came crypto winter and suddenly the prices dropped tremendously because the connection to to a real asset was missing mm. um uh, and this is nothing like no shot against Yuga Labs or, or both API Club. I, I admire what these guys have built. It's truly inspiring and very, very impressive. So hats off, hats off to them. Um, but essentially, yes, the, the reason why we chose hotels, uh, as I said, we did like quite a market research into multiple markets is um, if you would have the same business model in shipping, mm. It would make it would make money, but nobody would really get excited about this. <laughs> yeah, there has to be an emotional connect with with, with that industry. So. Exactly. <laughs> so people people during COVID they have been locked in, so mm. now after COVID we see a massive increase in people who are traveling. Mm. Um, so first of all, crises are very good to buy assets, and mm. hospitality still is in a crisis and. Mm. It, cash is king so if we can position ourselves now and buy uh, assets at a far better rate that's a really good setup in terms of financial assets number yes. one number two is people can earn money where they usually spend their vacation and that, that is that is brings a whole new element a whole new emotional element to normally a, a purely financial in, in investment driven uh, yes. environment you know Yeah. Um, so that was the reason why we chose to go for hotels. I'm not saying uh, particularly like for sure we will never go into any other asset class. No, that it, it could be that we go into other asset classes in real estate. It could that go to, could be that we go into different asset classes um, mm -hmm. from 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 other industries. Mm -hmm. um, but we believe that the the core that we are building right now uh, has. A lot of potential and is, is bringing a lot of value to to people and then we will also include the community and and give them what they want you know so yeah. where do you want to go next what so our our um 
biggest part of the community comes from Portugal. That's why we are organizing our first event in Lisbon. It's nice. not it's not just Portugal and Lisbon because I like Lisbon. Mm -hmm. No, but we <laughs> but the because the majority of our people are from Portugal. So, okay, so how many properties have you got uh, uh, till now uh, that is up for? Uh, uh, we we have we have not we have not launched yet. Oh wow! We have we have not launched. We are looking to launch in the at the end of the third quarter, early fourth quarter, um, this year. So what we've done was spread the word about the concept. We started eighteen months ago, but it's wow. it's quite a huge project in terms of foundation, regulatory environment, licenses, etc. All, all the stuff we, we, we were talking about also before the call. Uh, right. It takes some, some time. We're looking to, to um, list the first project uh, at the end of third, the third quarter, beginning of the, of the fourth quarter. Uh, we had a launch with the community where people get access the first time to, to joining the company and being part of it. And we, we sold out extremely fast um so the feedback from the community side is there it's a bit of a chicken and egg story you know what do you what do you what do you do first do you first launch the first hotel and then build the community or do you build the community and then launch the first project so okay. we do we do a little bit of uh, of both or not a little bit we do a lot of both at the same time you know no, that is you, you need to have a you need to create the distribution first before the product is launched yeah. Gone, are, gone are the days when they used to say build and they will come. No, no, no. Everybody is building. They will not come. <laughs> okay. Create a distribution channel. Uh, okay. Create uh, a community. And then, so I, I completely agree with you. Community first, distribution channel first. Excellent. My question to you was on the backer side, uh, what are they getting? Because you cannot have 10,000 people giving them timeshare on a hotel, no? Because that, that way it will not scale. What... Yeah. Uh, do you give them timeshare or do you give them some discounts or how does it how does it work out? First of all, um, the company then owns the equity, mm -hmm. but the people have a profit share based on this equity. Correct. So um, if we buy in for the 5 million and somebody would, uh, for whatever reason, join with 500,000, mm -hmm. he or she would get 10% of the overall profit share that the company gets on, on, on the site. Right. Um, so first of all, uh, if, you want, if you're in for the financial profit share, um, then, then that, is, that is what you get. You're not owner. What you get is the profit share. Mm. Um, that's number one. Number two is, are you still there? Because for me, you're, you're frozen right now. I'm there. I'm there. Tom, I'm there. I'm very much there, Tom. Can you hear me? Yeah, now, now I can hear you again. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what would be a, a, a live video call without even one technical issue, huh? <laughs> that would be... <laughs> perfection. perfection is a curse. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Tom. No, so so I, I see that still the, the, the connection is a, is a bit laggy. But you, you, so recording is perfectly fine, Tom. You don't have to worry about it. I think what, what gets uploaded is from your end Perfect. and mine. Yeah. That's amazing. Good. <laughs> um, so what the people are getting, first of all, is the, is the profit share from the overall uh, hotel. Yeah. And the second part is obviously they get additional benefits when they want to go on vacation themselves. Um, when they want to go on vacation themselves to, because we're building obviously a network of, of hotels. Our core is really the, the acquisition uh, of the hotels, right. but obviously in parallel, we're building a network of hotels. So when people go on vacation with their friends, with their family, they get additional benefits with being part uh, of the community. Yeah. But it's, why do, you, why do you buy a house in... Uh, in London because it pays rent you know mm -hmm. and it if you don't have a tenant a tenant you don't get rent it's okay. the same with a hotel but only on a much larger scale okay. so we have partners in locations where you don't have a season 
So we are not looking into Germany, Austria, Switzerland, because um, you have summer and winter. So mm. the, the returns are much more fluctuating than right. in Mexico, in Indonesia, in the Maldives. Right. And we are working with partners who have had stable returns, first of all, during COVID, and second of all, uh, like a proven track record over the last few last few years. So what the people are getting is primarily a, a profit share. Yeah. They are not legally owner, but they get like a virtual ownership, a virtual representation of ownership through the NFTs and the tokens. Right. But it's, it's, it's like a digital contract. Okay. If you to to un, to explain it in, in in simple terms, okay, excellent. So I, I got to understand what the backers get, uh, and can the backers participate from any part of the world? Is it any anywhere from everywhere, or how does it work? Like, is it global in in it, process? Uh, no, it's uh, Europe. We we we'll start we we'll start in Europe. Um, then we're looking to expand, obviously, but we know. We know financial markets, we know rules, we know regulations, uh, we know communities in Europe the best, even though, which is very funny, um, fractional ownership, fractional investments uh, in general, um, the most difficult market is Europe. <laughs> mm. We did an analysis and the, the most difficult market is Europe. What do you mean? So, what, what is is it the regulation? Is it what what is the uh, difference? Not not only the regulatory part, but also from from the acceptance on on the on the backers on the community side. I see. Okay. There are much more models in in uh, the US, for example, uh, or in Latin America for these kind of models. Mm. People are much more much more open about it. Mm. Uh, so as soon as we have established ourselves, we're looking to, to expand. But we see our six core markets right now is number one is Portugal, mm -hmm. number two is Spain, three is Italy, mm -hmm. uh, and number four is UK, five Germany, and six is the Netherlands. What about Greece? Greece is also attractive, no? Um, for the hotels, yes. For the community, we have not seen so much feedback from Greece, to be honest. Excellent. I think this is very, very exciting. Uh, which countries you're operating? So your properties are in Europe. Your, the backers are in Europe, and you as the SP. properties. Properties are global. Ah, properties are global. Ah, I see. Yeah. Properties are global. Backers are in Europe, Correct. and you as a company is in Europe, right? So that's how um, We have the holding company in the UAE. I'm resident in 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 Dubai also. Uh, so we have the holding structure in the UAE. We have the crypto and the management uh, part of the company in uh, Europe, in Estonia. Ah, I see. So the holding company in the UAE, because the UAE is much more regulatory adaptable to make yes. these purchases global. Okay, yes. got okay, got it. Excellent. I think that that, that is helpful. And then uh, my last question was, uh, what, what stage are you in? Like, uh, I, I know you are about to launch and you have been building this community and the product in the last 18 months. But how about fundraising? Uh, have you raised some money or will you be raising more money? How, 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 how is it? You, you, you can never raise enough money, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> when building a company, uh, you always raise funds, mm. uh, I would say, first of all either to do M&As because you want to acquire other companies if you're large or to hire people or to expand markets. It's, you're always in somewhat shape or form in, in, in fundraising. I think we are right now in one of the most exciting times that I've had with Askira because mm. um, all, all of the pieces of the puzzle are coming together. We, we raised funds already. We raised half a million and we are obviously in uh, conversations with institutional investors, um, with, with uh, family offices, with business angels, etc. But we are right now in a very good, we are, we are in a very good position as of right now. And all of the pieces of the puzzle are coming very well together. Um, we will have multiple separate launches with the product, with the event at Lisbon, uh, with 
the token launch itself. So in the next few weeks, a lot of moving parts are, are coming and, and, and clicking together. And the thing is, because of the industry where we're in, it takes a lot of time to build the foundation. Yeah. But once this is set, we can scale really fast, yeah. like really fast because the foundation is built. The foundation is the, the most difficult part yeah. by far. Um, but then to, to, to scale a community and to um, launch more properties mm -hmm. is not, not a big issue you know uh, obviously community takes time takes uh, energy takes passion and we we really believe in in, in what we are doing and it, it it takes some time to grow but i i believe there's not really the bottleneck so in terms of uh at which stage we are <laughs> good question we're the growth we're growth stage <laughs> since 18 months <laughs> excellent and uh and do, do, are there other players in the, in, in the similar space, similar model, or would you call yourself one of the? Not in hospital, not, not in hospitality, not the way we do it. Um, it there are other, the, there are other platforms that make uh, participation in real estate uh, accessible for smaller budgets, in mm -hmm. single or multifamily homes, residential. Um, some are working, as I said, only with accredited investors, mm. but not hotels globally for smaller budgets with technology. For retail investors, okay. Yeah. I would not say backers, retail backers. <laughs> if, excellent. Well, this brings us to the end of a fascinating conversation with, uh, with Tom. Uh, Tom, I think we are building something uh, groundbreaking here, something extraordinary, and I'm very, very uh, keen to see uh, the the exciting uh, days of of you launching and then scaling and growing, so all the Thank best, you. all the best to you. Brian. Thank you. Latest when we see us, I I know you're also speaking. Are we allowed to say this here? Are we allowed to say yeah. this? Okay. All promotion, all promotion is welcome. Yes, <laughs> we, we so we we we'll see us latest in in, in PropTech Connect in in London, um, when we when we're both speaking at the at the conference. I'm I'm much looking forward to that. Uh, looking forward to seeing you in in person um, so, excited, so to, excited to see also what's what's going on on, on your side how you're growing yours your your business uh prop tech buzz uh congratulations on everything you've built i'm, I'm super excited and it was it was great to be be part of your show here thank you so much tom have a good day bye-bye thank, thank you ravi bye-bye